By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are at the third round of the Dwarven Warriors Cup and this is an alpha beta tournament. And we're going to look at a classic magic fight here. Ron is playing a mono black deck, he's the player sitting on the left. And Alexander, a player from Germany, he's sitting on the right and he's playing with a mono green deck. And uh, you can actually see that on his play mat, by the way, it's custom made by Dan Frazier and you can see that beautiful force of nature there. And um, well, this is going to be quite a matchup because both players have a lot of acceleration in their decks. Well, I say a lot, but they have some of it and they hoping they hope to find it early in the game. And both players really play with creature heavy decks. I believe that Ron is playing with Black Knights, Hypnotic Spectres, Sangir Vampires. Of course, he's playing with Dark Rituals. So if he can use his Dark Rituals to just get his threats out early, he's also playing with Frozen Shade, one of my favorite creatures in old school magic. And not because of the strength, but because of the art. And I, oh, I always used to think Frozen Shade had flying, by the way. But okay, that's another discussion. It does not have flying. I will just have to accept it. But I, I don't think it would be overpowered if they would have given it flying. Okay, but I'm, I'm going to stop about it now. Because it's still, it just would be so much more playable if the card would have flying. It would kind of be like a killer bees in black. Anyway, so we've got Frozen Shade on the side of Ron, but of course Alexander is playing with green. That means he's got access to Lunara Elves, so he's hoping to find a lot of Lunara Elves and deploy a lot of creatures quickly and simply trample over Ron. Talking about trampling, he's playing with Alpha Forces of Nature in his deck, so eight, eight beautiful creatures, and I'm really hoping to see them. I also believe he's got Berserks in his deck, so can you imagine that he may attack with his deck with an Alpha Force of Nature, cast an Alpha Berserk, and hit him for 16 trample damage. That would be insane. But of course, Ron is playing with black, so he has access to a lot of creature removal. And I think that might be the key to the victory here for Ron. I can see a few ways here that Ron can win this game. One of them being playing a terror, playing a well-timed drain life, and kind of, you know, take care of like the stampede from Alexander and then take control of the game. Another one is card advantage. I mean, he's playing with Mind Twist, yuck, but he's playing with one and he's playing with Hypnotic Spectre. So he can use those cards to discard um, cards from Alexander and then get the upper hand. And remember, in this format Alpha Beta, it's not really easy to get extra cards, especially in these color combinations. So that could be definitely be, be a way for Ron to snatch this game. Okay, enough talk. Enough um, uh, discussion, let's go to game one and let's see how these players will do against each other. It's black versus green. Game number one and we have Ron, the black player sitting on the left and on the right side, we've got Alexander, the mono green player and uh let me know who who's your favorite who's your favorite is it the mono green like the big creatures the ramp with the lanowers or is it just a brutal power cards from the mono black player that we're going to see here especially that discard package with hypnotic specters and a mind twist and there we see that alexander has won the uh the dice roll so that means that he gets to start here Obviously good news, hopefully for Alexander, he can find like a Lana else, for example, or at least a one drop. He's also playing with script sprites, for example. And there is the script sprites, okay, nice. So early pressure here, can Ron find a dark ritual? Just passing after casting that swamp. There is a Lana else, things are looking really good for Alexander. And the only thing that would have been better here is maybe a grizzly bear or another one drop. Attacking here, that means Ron is dropping to 18 and he's going to cast a Juggernaut here, the 5-3 powerhouse. Remember, it's an artifact creature, so it's going to be difficult for Ron to get rid of this creature with uh, any of his removal since Terror is not going to work. And I wonder if he plays with Paralyze. If he does, Alexander will still be able to untap because of the extra mana from the Lunar Elves. And we can now see that Ron is a little bit in the tank here. He's still on 18 though, so not too much damage for him yet. So he has some time still. And there is the Hypnotic Spectre. 
And that probably means that Alexander is not going to attack with the script sprites. Instead, just attacking with the Juggernaut. 5 damage here for Ron, dropping to 13. And remember, Alexander is playing with Giant Groves and with Berserks. So, ooh, there is a Mind Twist. We talked about Mind Twist already. Oh, man. He is forcing Alexander to discard his Alpha Force of Nature. I would have loved to see that coming to play. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a good play from Ron, but he's on 8 now after another hit by the Juggernaut. He needs to maybe play a Sengir or something to get rid of the Juggernaut to take care of it at least. And this will do the trick, an Icy Manipulator. That's actually a perfect draw attacking here. And Alexander just taking 2 and discarding his Forest. And that means that he can now attack also with his Crypt Sprites. He can actually just deal 2 damage here, so he's going to drop him to 6. And does he have another creature? Oh, maybe this is even better. And Chaos Orb, he can start flipping on the Icy Manipulator. And that will open up possibilities for the Juggernaut. So that's interesting to see what Alexander will do on end step. Let's first see what Ron's going to do. He's got five untapped lands here. He probably wants to keep a mana for his Icy. So that means he can cast something of four or less. Will we see a Frozen Shade? It's not really going to help him now, but it would be interesting. If he's going to attack with Hippie, he definitely has something in his hand to deal with the Juggernaut. And, I mean, considering he's on 6, I mean, I don't know what's in his hand, but I would probably keep the Hypnotic Specter at bay. And there he's casting, oh, a Drain Life! That's a perfect answer to that Juggernaut. And remember, Drain Life is just great because it works two ways. It also brings him to 9 in total. And Alexander, they're going to 16. He's not using his Chaos Orb yet. And there is a tap of the script sprites attacking with the Lonely Lawnower, so he's going to drop to 8 here, casting, uh, playing a forest. And he's not using his Chaos Orb yet, he's being very patient with his Chaos Orb. Dropping to 14 now, and it looks like Ron is really back into his match. And there is a Black Knight, followed by another Hypnotic Spectre. And now he's kind of getting overwhelmed by all these black creatures. And all of a sudden, it's looking pretty bad here for Alexander. He's actually keeping his creatures untapped now. No, no sense of attacking them into the Hippie and the Black Knight. And I think this game has changed right now. And Ron is, is in the driver's seat taking control of this. And there's probably a, a Chaos Orb flip here forced. A little bit forced by Alexander, I guess. Hopefully, he's going to hit this one. Let's see what's going to happen. And, oh, that is not a hit. That is not a hit. It got stuck there. And that is very unfortunate for Alexander because even with the hit, it would have still been very, very tough. And this is it. This is game number one. Oh, man, that changed very quickly. I mean, Alexander had a great start. And I really thought he was going to get that game one. But um, as it turned out, Ron could stabilize with the Icy and, of course, with the Mind Twist, forcing Alexander to uh, discard his Force of Nature. And then the Mist Flip was just even more misery here for Alexander. That means Ron wins this first game. Both players are going into their sideboards and we'll catch up with them in game number two. Game number two is about to start here. And uh, let's see what the green player Alexander can do. If he can get a win, that would mean that these players would have to go for a third game to decide this matchup. And uh, of course, it's again Alexander on the play here. And it looks like Ron has taken a mulligan. Let's see if he puts a card on the bottom. We know it for sure. Looking at his hand, deciding if he wants to keep. I really wonder what these players have boarded in. And uh, one of the things that kind of caught my mind thinking about, of course, black and green is that you've got um, life force on the green side, which, which is an enchantment for two green. And for two green, you can counter target black spell. And on the side of black, you've got death lace, which can do the same for two black and encounter a green spell. So I wonder if these players have boarded this in. Look at this beautiful Cardi by Alexander, a grizzly bears. Unfortunately for him, Ron casts a black knight. So, because of the Black Knight is first strike, it is going to win against the Grizzly Bear. Remember, Alexander does play with uh, Giant Groves. We haven't seen that in game one, but he does play with them. And there's a Dark Ritual into Sengir Vampire. And wow, this is not great news here for Alexander. The Sengir 
He is blocking. Yes, there is a giant growth. That Sengir came out very, very early in this match because of that dark ritual. Let's see what Alexander can do here. Look at that tapping four. There is a juggernaut. That's actually a pretty good answer here from uh, from Ron. An attack here, or from Alexander. Attack here with the Sengir Vampire. Alexander dropping to 16. And there's a force field from Ron. For people that don't know, it's an artifact. It's a pretty special one. You can pay one and then all damage that you get from a creature is reduced to one life. So you see him doing it here. So instead of taking five from the Juggernaut, by activating the force field, he's only getting losing one measly life. So this is not great for Alexander, who wants to keep putting pressure on the life total of Ron. And with that flyer on Ron's side, it's again not looking great for Alexander here. He's actually dropping to 12 here with this attack. And there is a death grip. Oh, this is bad news for uh, for Alexander. He needs to get rid of the death grip. Maybe he has a tranquility on the side. He's first going to attack if he activates his force field, and he does. He cannot activate his death grip anymore. So it now means that he's going to lose four life in total, one life from the War Mammoth, one life from the Juggernaut, and oh, nice, well played. A tranquility here by Alexander's second main phase, taking care of the death grip. And this must feel really good, but it's still, he's still got that problem of that force field. And there is, wow, a Berserk on the side of Alexander here, probably realizing that Berserk is not going to do all that much with that force field on the table. So that means that Alexander got rid of the Sengir Vampire, but his life total has dropped to a measly four life. And remember, Ron is playing with drain lives. So it's, it's a very dangerous situation here. Attacking with both. Interestingly enough, not attacking with the Grizzly Bear is probably going to use it to chump. And there is a Lanawar Elves, another chump blocker for the Black Knight. And let's see what he can do. If Ron can find another Flyer, it's pretty much over here. There is the chump block by the Lanawar Elves. Tapping three here for a Hypnotic Spectre. Okay, it's not the worst. It's not great, but it's not the worst. Probably going to attack still with the War Mammoth and the Juggernaut. I wonder what's in his hand. Deciding just to attack here with the Juggernaut. And that means just one damage because of that force field by Ron. So you can see here the strength of a card like force field that usually doesn't see a lot of play in old school magic. But with this Alpha Beta format. And there we see a Terror. Ay ay ay! Really bad news here for Alexander who was hoping to trade his or actually to block uh to oh this is interesting a giant spider uh what i'm trying to say here but there's just so much happening alexander was hoping to use his war mammoth to block the black knight but look at that gorgeous giant spider and uh this is it that's the game because he can attack with and the hippie and the black knight and then that's two damage that means that alexander is gonna drop here or actually actually lost the game ron has got two wins here um and yeah Congratulations to Ron. I would have loved to see, uh, you know, some more action here and another game, but it is what it is. Ron takes this, wins it with two to zero. And I think looking at his deck, he might actually advance. And look at that. The force field actually came from his sideboard. So that's quite an interesting sideboard card here from Ron. Now, if you want to see more action from the Dwarven Warriors Cup, I'm going to try to... Uh, um, put a new match on Timmy Talks every Tuesday. So keep an eye on the channel if you like this alpha beta magic. Furthermore, if you want to support the channel, you probably know what to do already. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet. Share these videos on your social socials. It's really, really appreciated because by doing that, you're helping the channel to grow. Leave a like, leave a comment. YouTube loves that stuff. And you can also support me and support the channel actually support the channel uh, financially by becoming a sponsor through Patreon. So there's probably a card popping up right now. Click on that link and that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page where you can become a patron. Talking about patrons, let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the
Kikitus, Fikitus, Somba Kazik.